Hello and welcome to what's new in Microsoft 365 and Teams for June 2023. I'm Mark Thompson from supersimple365.com and I have updates for lists, OneDrive, OneNote, Stream, Teams and a few from around 365. I'm just going to highlight these icons at the bottom again. I've not used these for a little while, but I know they're coming up today. So this first one with the tick, this tells you that it is available now, the feature I'm talking about. This little piece of chocolate or a cookie with the bite out of it, it's just a quick bite size update. The uh, telescope is one to watch. It's that they're almost always from the 365 roadmap and a little bit further out. So take the details with a pinch of salt. And this clock here with the uh, the snooze uh, little zeds on it, that's just a, a, an update that's been delayed. And it's just uh, gonna be a little bit late. Uh, and that, hand like that stop sign hand uh none of those this week i don't think um so let's get on and oh let me just tell you actually if anything catches your eye then go to the notes part of the video and you can read all the details over on the blog and there's more over there so 50 updates over there i don't cover nearly that many in this session uh but there's topics over there covered like sharepoint and viva so after the video then go and have a look and see what uh, is of interest to you and our first topic is Microsoft Lists. And our first update is the custom list template update. Let me zoom in here a little bit for you. You can see there's a new tab there for list templates from your organization. Uh, this is due uh, mid-June to late August. So you might be able to see those anytime now. The next one is applied filters. So let's have a little look, closer look at this. And all this is at the top of your list and when you're filtering, it's just showing you which filters have been applied. So quite a simple update that should be available to you now, but quite uh, useful, I think. And new list templates uh, with approvals. So these have been pushed back a little bit, but should be due um, early July. And these updates, these templates are and I'm just looking at the other screen, so apologies for the slight delay. They are the travel requests with approvals list template and the content scheduler with approvals. That are quite interesting. You can hop over to log and read a little bit more if you want to. But those folks are due early July. And our next topic is OneDrive. So some quick ones here. So these are all ones to watch. So colored folders. I know someone, uh, a colleague, Kirsty, she would love that. She's got uh, super organized Outlook uh, colors and she's quite visual. I think she would love the ability to uh, change the colors of folders in OneDrive. Um, easily get to files shared, by, shared to you by people. So just the ability to group all the files that have been shared with you by the people who have, uh, have shared them. So, so in my case, I might want, for example, to, to group I don't know, I want to see every file that Kirsty Brown has shared with me and I can just I can just um, go to the people view and I can see who has shared those files with me. So that's quite useful. The meeting view, so all files that have been shared in a meeting, all in that view as well. And finally, recommended files. And all of these are due uh, August to September. I bet they'll all sort of come at sort of the same time, won't they? So some quite nice updates for OneDrive there. And our next topic is OneNote. Uh, first one is navigation layout options in OneNote on Windows. So let's ha have a little look in here, zoom in. So this is the traditional way, having these tabs across the top. And honestly, I feel strongly that's my preferred way. Um, but you get the option to go into settings and change it. So you can have those down the left-hand side. So there's a bit of a mix with, with uh, OneNote, and depending on how you look at it, uh, which which version of the app you're using. Some have it across the tabs across top, some down the left hand side, but the, the, the Windows version is giving you the choice. I, I personally, folks, I can't understand why anyone would want them down the left because it just takes up even more room on the screen uh, for me, but I think I'm in the uh, minority and it makes sense for most people to have it uh, over on the left. Maybe it's my age, I'm just used to having it at the top. Anyway. That, folks, is available for you now. Uh, what do we have? Insert meeting details from across 365. So oh, that's not quite, that description's not quite right, that heading, is it? Um, you can already do this. I, I do this probably daily, where I have a meeting, I, I go to OneNote, 
I'll create a new page. I then pull in the details of whatever meeting I'm going to. Uh, I just pop the time and date into the into the, uh, the the title, which which is already populated with the name of the meeting, uh, and that works really well. So it's pulled in all the details of the meeting. What it's also going to start doing is pulling in uh, the other assets from the meeting. And let me just remind, refresh my memory as we look at this. So we're talking about uh, loop, uh, other details of Outlook and Teams directly into your OneNote. So I think that's going to be cool. But look at that. I'm not sure you should even be. I'm going to tell you about it. Look how far out that's um, February next year, but definitely worth looking out for. I love using OneNote for meetings. Text predictions for OneNote on Windows. So just the ability for it to make a suggestion and you can uh, use the right arrow or press a, a tab and it will accept the, uh, the, 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 uh, the suggestion for what it thinks you're going to type. Uh, and that should be with us by mid-August. And next up, we've got stream. So just a quick one. This really doesn't, does this affect the end users or not, mate? I guess it could do. Maybe it's one more for the admins. The uh, retirement date for classic stream has been pushed out from, I think, the 15th of February to this day. You can see now the 15th of April. So there's loads on the blog about that. So if you're interested, go and check that out. Stream playlist view in SharePoint has been delayed. You can see it's got this icon on the left. So that's been delayed now due um, um, early June to late July. So you might have this, this new web part. But if we just zoom in here a little bit, you can see that in SharePoint, I've, uh, I've got this um, this, uh, this this playlist here, and it shows me the videos in the playlist, and this uh, the, the video can play over on the right hand side. I'm not sure that's the best screenshot to, to show that, that web part, but hopefully you get the gist of how it's going to look. Audio tracks and descriptions for stream on SharePoint it due in September. So it might be that um, you want to add a different language uh, uh, of an, an audio uh, an audio track on the same video, and then people can choose that audio track. It might be that you have slightly different audiences. Uh, maybe you want to give a technical um, description. If you think about uh, some movies that have um, like the director's commentary over the top, so think about that, folks. It'd be interesting to see how, how, how that's actually used but you can you can choose different tracks so people can choose uh, what, what they actually listen to and automatic transcriptions for video files uploaded to SharePoint Yammer and um, uh, office.com so this is due in uh, June so it should be arrived now it's just going to automatically uh, create those transcripts for every single uh, video that gets uploaded Getting through this fairly quickly this month, a little bit quieter. We are now on to Teams. Let's see what we've got. Show or hide previews in your Microsoft Teams chat list. Let's have a look at this. So on this screenshot, we have gone to our Teams settings. We're looking at uh, a general, and in here, you can see that you've got your chat density section. And in here, we've got this new slider. I apologize for the state of this uh, screenshot. In here we've got this new, this new uh, slider, uh, and it gives you the ability to show or hide previews in your chat list. Let's see how this looks. So this is a, this is a the chat the chat list. Let me just make sure you can see that it's the chat. Now normally what you'd have here is the first line of what each message is, and you can see that that is now missing. And you can see you've got so many more chats there. Personally, folks, I think. I recommend to people, especially who haven't found their own way of working yet, I recommend that once they've uh, once they once they've read a message and they've actioned it, they they hide it so it drops off this list. So in this list here, all you have are emails that you need to read properly or you need to action that emails messages, um, teams chat messages that you need to action or you need to read. And if you don't need to action it, you don't need to read it. I I recommend people hide it. I don't know why you'd want more, but you know some people some people do. So you can it makes better use of the space, but also it might be folks that you like that because of privacy. So if people can see over your back and you do a very sensitive job, people can see uh, see your screen. It might be that you don't want that first line showing off. So there's a couple of uses for that. Uh, available now in Classic Teams Desktop. So I, I've checked before recording this, and I have it. Um, the date is to be to be confirmed for the new version of Teams. 
Okay, animated backgrounds in Teams meetings. You can choose a predefined background from Microsoft before a meeting. This is the, the pre-joined screen you see on the right side, or you can do it during the meeting as well. And the animated ones, if we just zoom into here, see this little video icon, you can just see, I'm just kind of highlighting that. You can see that they're kind of marked out as the videos. So you can choose that, get that set up, and then you can have that running in your background during a meeting. Um, I can't be honest, folks. I don't understand why you would want that. It just looks distracting, and I, I don't even know. I, I like all the light-hearted stuff in Microsoft 365 and Teams, but some of the, the, the an animated background, I don't know. Anyway, so this has some processing overhead for your machine, and you need at least 8 gigs of RAM and a 4-core CPU. If you're using this at work, you probably have got that. And, that, of course, I might be... Uh, getting that totally wrong, depending on where you work, uh, and might be dependent on by country as well. But I've, I'm guessing that most people from work would, would have that. Uh, due um, early to late July, uh, and around a little bit earlier for people on targeted release and preview. Okay, so some quick ones for Teams. The new app sharing experience. This should be available now, although I must confess I didn't check before starting the video. It just means that if you're you've got an app that you think is good, it should be really easy for you just to click on the, uh, to click on it and then to share it like you share anything else. So that should be available now. Avatars for Microsoft uh, Teams. Now, I got uh, I was doing a recording uh, part two of a video with Kirsty Brown for our for our other channel. Uh, Mark and Kirsty banging on about Microsoft 365 and we did our first video and then the licensing kicked in and we couldn't complete the second one so we got kind of caught out by that. Now Microsoft have expanded this now. If you're interested in, in avatars, go and have a look at the, the, the notes section of the video, jump over to the blog and then follow the link and you can, you can read all about it. I really like that people, I've never, people hate them right? or they love them. Uh, it's, it's a really polarizing feature. I personally really like them because not everyone wants to to, to, um, to, to, go, to go on camera. They, they might be shy, they might have a, a, a skin condition, they might have a, a Tourette's or a tick or, or a visual thing that they, they're not comfortable with, but they still want to be more represented in, in a video, in, in a video call. So I think it's borderline an accessibility um, uh, uh, feature because it, it just welcomes so many more people in. But anyway, we're kind of straying a little bit. Microsoft have made it available to a lot more people, only the most basic license types won't have it. So hopefully, folks, your organization have turned that on and understand that uh, you're not just going to waste loads of time. It actually has a use for the workplace. Anyway, enough of my opinions about that. Uh, link to a specific message in Teams group chat. I really like this. I want you to think about a, a chat that you've got in a channel uh, and if you want to, to reference it, you can just click on the ellipsis, sort of three little dots, and then you can click a link, you can create a link to it, and you can link to it. You don't have that in group chat, so when you want to refer to something, it's uh, it's a little bit more difficult. But you get the ability to link to a, a specific message in those group chats. Should be here sometime uh, in July or August, folks. And a small change, but I think quite good. Present a local file from the PowerPoint app to PowerPoint Live in Teams. So you are on a call and on your desktop, you have got a, a PowerPoint file open. Now that PowerPoint file isn't saved in the cloud. It's just on your machine. I don't know why, folks, because you know you should be saving this your, your, your stuff to at least to OneDrive or if it's work-related, it should be on SharePoint and Teams, of course. But for whatever reason, you've got it on your, de on your desktop, on your machine, and it's not backed up anywhere. Right from here, you're going to be able to present to it in Teams, even though at this stage it's in no way connected. And it will upload a copy, and then it will start sharing. June, uh, July, so anytime now, um, that should be available to you. Some more quick updates for Teams. New Microsoft Teams channel experience. So... It's saying that it's now due uh, late July to early August. Now, I've got this in Teams where I'm not on... Um, where I'm not on a, any, a preview channel, I'm not in preview mode. Well, I was previously, I've come out of preview mode and I've got this now. I don't know where I've got it because it's rolling out now to some to everybody and it's just a little bit earlier than it says on the screen. Or have I got it because I've previously, 
I've previously used it and it's kind of stuck. I don't, I don't know. But anyway, folks, if you don't have it and the new channel experience, if you don't know what that is, go over to the blog uh, and have a look. Uh, but essentially, it, um, for me, a couple of main things, the new stuff is at the top uh, and the, the small but big change is um, it, 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 it's, um, it, it, it encourages you to add a, a title or, or, um, or a topic for every single thread that you start. So it's, it's, it's a good thing, um, but a little bit delayed for some people. Myself Teams is getting a new chat and channel search experience. I talked about this last month as well. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go and check out the blog. Um, it's just making it a little bit easier to, to search uh, your chats and your channels to find what you want. It's, it is a genuinely better experience. Uh, folks, uh, along with that channel experience, maybe these two are kind of tied up together, uh, that's due uh, late uh, July to early August. Preview and playback of stream videos in line in Teams chat and channels. So instead of you having to open up a video to watch it, you can watch it inside the uh, the chat that you saw, you, you, someone, someone shared it with you in, or the channel. So right inside that window, it will play. No doubt you can pop it out, but it just means you don't have to leave Teams to watch those videos. So that looks quite good. And it's due this month, uh, this month being July. We've got to the around Microsoft 365 section, which means we're getting near to the end. And our first one is tasks in Microsoft Loop components to start syncing with Planner and To Do. So you can see on the screen here, we are inside Outlook and it applies only to the task list uh, loop. It will automatically sync and appear in Planner and To Do and the Tasks app in Teams. And that is due by mid July this year. This is quite interesting. I don't have a lot to say at this stage. In fact, I think I'm going to just read off this other screen just to tell you a little bit more. And then when more details are released, I'll be able to expand on it. So Microsoft Edge for Business aims to address the needs of both end users and IT professionals. Um, duh, duh, duh. A rich set of native enterprise controls, a new look and feel, automatic switching to keep your work and personal uh, browsing separate. The, the support for unmanaged bring your own PC uh, situations. And I tell you what, I'm hoping. I'm hoping all that rubbish from the from the feed, all that all that news about I don't know, so and so drank a cocktail. You won't guess what happened next, or all that sponsored rubbish that comes that comes in that's what i'm hoping i hope the, the the business version doesn't have all that rubbish maybe you can pay for it that'd be great um so we'll see how that pans out folks i'm gonna get off my high horse for a second but hopefully it just focuses on work stuff a little bit more and not um uh really important stuff like who's dating who whiteboard external guest sharing due september so i know this has been wanted for a long time now, of course, there's lots of rules around this. I want you to think about uh, files that are in your SharePoint or your OneDrive. Can you share those externally with, with, with people now? Okay, so I'm guessing you can have a, a similar set of rules. The, the, the blog post does break this down a little bit more for you, but essentially, if I was an end user, I'm thinking, can I, can I do external sharing with my current files? If yes, then I've got a chance of being able to do it with the whiteboard. Task history in Microsoft Project. I can't be honest, folks. I haven't touched Project for a decade. Uh, all I know is that the ability to look at task history or improve task history is coming. So if you're a Microsoft Project person, you'll know where to go and find out more about that. Okay, so folks, that brings us to the end of another month. Remember to go and read the blog. Now, the, uh, the update for next month has already started. So if you hop over to the blog, you can see uh, every few days I update it and it just builds as the month goes on. And that's a good way to keep up to date. I've got a little icon that says new that shows you the very latest um, content. So you don't need to read the whole thing to see what you've what you've missed. They should jump out at you because I've got a little new icon. And every, time, every few days I update it with some more, I take the old new icons off and put the new ones on. So go and check that out. So uh, that's a good way for you to keep up to date. Look at all the socials on the screen. It's nice and easy to, to stay up to date. I'm doing a lot more on LinkedIn now. So if you want to follow me there, um, 
by Super Simple 365 or my name, Mark Thompson. But folks, we're done. I hope you found that uh, helpful. Uh, look out for updates along the month and I will see you in about four weeks. Thank you for watching and listening.